clicker over there. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. Now, listen, if I see that you're getting ready to go to sleep, I'm going to have to get up and do Father Abraham. Uh, you, you remember that? Father Abraham? He says, no, I don't remember that. So yeah, Father Abraham had many sons. Well, thank you guys so much for allowing us to come today. What we're going to do today is do a brief overview of what we went over last night, just kind of catch everybody up. And then we're going to go right through what we're talking about today. Is that okay? All right. I like lots of participation because you got to keep me awake. All that great food, the itis is kicking in. All right. So let's get started. What we're going to talk about today is basically church lead generation funnel. Now, when we talk about funnel, I don't want you. Uh, well, here, here are the uh, rules of engagement. If ever I say something that's too tech, too techy, just let me know. Hey, pastor, break it down for me. I'll be more than happy to do that. And because I'm from the South, I do speak kind of quickly. So if I get excited and I start talking a, a little fast, just say, put it on 33. Some of y'all are too young to remember what that is, but back in the day, so you remember what it is. Back in the day, we used to have these things before CDs, they were circular, but they were called records. And you could have a 45 or you could have a 33. So just say, put it on 33, that means I need to slow it down a little bit. All right, so let's get right into it. Last night, we did something that I thought would be the foundation of what it is that we were going to uh, do all together. And so we put a lot of emphasis. Uh, this is, isn't working. Okay, he's got it. Uh, all right, so this is what we covered last night. You, you, you're not too far behind. We covered the uh, determining your target audience, and also we talked about creating a landing page. We talked about those two things. But we spent a lot of time on a target audience because what I've discovered is much easier for us to get people to raise their hand and say, I want what you have, as opposed to trying to convince them that they need what we have. You guys understand that, that little principle? So we want to make sure that we, we're giving people opportunity to raise their hand and say, hey, I want what your church has, as opposed to going door to door and knocking and getting them to say that they want this. So I used to be a Bible worker back in the day. And so we used to go door to door, knocking on doors. It was great. You get people who, who wanted the gospel message. You also get people who would slam the door in your face. You get people who curse you out, sick the dogs on you. So I got smart. I just walked up to the door and I started asking for a glass of water. If you give me a glass of water, I got a great chance of talking to you. But nowadays, just in case you don't know, it's very dangerous to go to somebody's driveway or even go to their door. You know, uh, people are shooting people just showing up at their property. So what we had to do was figure out another way to attract people to our churches, another way to go ye therefore. But even though the world was dangerous, the pandemic came, we still had to figure out a way of how to get this gospel message to the world. Now, a little bit about me. I'm a pastor. I am also um, a, a digital digital marketing expert. That's what they say, expert. So um, that's what I've been called, expert. So here's what I here's how I got, here's how we got here. Uh, back in 2019, 20. 19, 20, 20, one of those years right before COVID, literally right before COVID, had a conversation with my wife and I said, wife, 2020. OK, so I said, wife, I have this burden that I want to start a digital marketing agency. I want to start my business and get that thing going. I wanted to be like Paul, be like a tent maker so that, uh, you know, the conferences where we where we were from, they don't give you a lot of money to do evangelism. And I love to do evangelism. So I had to figure out how to make money in order to do evangelism. So I started I, I went found this guy by the name of Russell Brunson who uh, who does uh, click funnels and all this other stuff. So if you hear anything about Russell Brunson, you know, he's one of those gurus. And so I signed up to be part of Russell Brunson's circle and it was like twenty five hundred dollars a month. I did that for about 18 months, getting the information that I needed to start and launch my digital marketing business. So here I am ready to launch a digital marketing business and all of a sudden, boom, COVID happens and everything shuts down. I was like, wow. And in my church at the time where I was, we didn't have a website, we didn't have a YouTube page, we didn't have any of that. So I'm trying to figure out how can I keep the church going and how can I grow the church with nobody coming outside of their houses? 
And you know what the Lord said to me? The Lord said, you know, all that money you were spending because you thought you were getting ready to launch your digital marketing business. Guess what? I let you do it so that you can launch this digital evangelism for my church. And so I took the principles that I learned from Russell Brunson and ClickFunnels and all that other stuff, digital marketing, and I figured out that we don't have products or services to sell, but we do have something to give. And that's the gospel message. So I took those principles of digital marketing and pulled it into what we call digital evangelism. Now, you guys have probably heard that term before, digital evangelism. But what's different for me is that we're high tech, but we're also high touch. Same time. And that's the component that I believe that a lot of us are missing because we want to do digital evangelism like digital marketing. They're not the same. Same principles, same tools, but the outcomes are completely different. You have to be high touch when it comes to digital evangelism. So here's the funnel that we use. And you guys may know this. And when I start, when I say the first word, those of you who know, you're going to know. The first word in the top of the funnel is what? Mingle, right? Where have we heard that for? Where we have to mingle with people. Anybody? Anybody want to tell me where we heard that before? You, get, you remember a book by the name of um, Ministry of Healing, page 143, she talks about, Ellen White talks about ministry, she talks about Christ's methods alone. And so all I did was take Christ's methods alone and put it into a funnel online. That's all I did. And how did I get this idea? So I was, as I was looking at digital evangelism, I started to talk with different pastors who had uh, bigger churches. Those churches were progressive. Those churches were growing. And as I went into one of the pastor's offices, I noticed a little red book on the uh, bookshelf, and it was called Evangelism. And I said, oh, my goodness. You mean to tell me that everything you're doing, you're getting out of this book right here? Here I am trying to find information about what's new, and he has what I already have. So I said, wow, this stuff really works. So I started researching, and that's when I really bumped into, again, Ministry of Healing, and I began to look at how can we take Christ's methods alone and put it on the, on, the, uh, on the computer, on the internet, and make it work where we're bringing people into the church. So that's basically what we're doing, Christ's methods alone. That's it. You got to mingle with people. Paul, as he went to a, a new area, he didn't go door to door. What, where did he go? Anybody knows where he went to? I know you guys are Bible scholars. Where, where did he go to? He went to the marketplace. Where's our marketplace now? You want to buy something? Do you have to go to the grocery store now and buy anything? You, you can buy your car online. So the marketplace is online. Guess where there are billions of people who gather every day? Online. Online. All the thing we have to do is figure out how to reach them. How do we mingle with them? How do we do this? How do we mingle with people and we, we, we uh, manage a way to bring them to Christ? So that's all we're going to talk about. This is what we talked about last night. So last night I showed you once again, does this really work? That's the important thing. I could sit here and tell you 100% that it works, but documentation meets conversation 24-7. So in my documentation, if you go to eAdventist, every church has access to what's called eAdventist. In February 2022, our people who were in our audience of our church, we had 20 people, two zero. Mm, is right. Mm. 20 people. February 2023, we had 182 people. Who can say amen to that? Now, what did we do? We did Christ's methods alone. I had, I had an aging congregation, which means that I had a, 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 some seasoned saints in there that had the willingness to do so, but they were limited in their mobility, a steep learning curve with technology because I was figuring everything out as it goes. I'm not sure, I'm not sure if you know this or not, but when you're trying to figure things out, it's hard to explain it. So now that I've got it, I can, kind of, I can really explain it very well. So that's that's, this is how I know that it works. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to look at the church lead generation strategy of how we can attract people online and funnel them to our church. That's the important thing. How do we get them from online 
to in person. How do we do that? And so I'm going to give you some basic steps. This right here is another um, uh, 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 documentation here. You see where we had, uh, when we first started our funnel, we had exponential church growth. Boom. I'm talking about things shot out like a rocket. Then we shut it down because I've discovered that you can't just continue to have people coming into your church and not teaching them. You, at some point, you got to uh, move them to the discipleship process. So you'll see where you'll start to see as you guys start putting stuff online, how people will start coming into the church. And then at some point, you need to kind of cut it off so that you can start uh, talking to those people that are there, developing those relationships and getting them interested in having a life with Jesus. So. But that being said, here is what I discovered from a guy by the name of C.D. Brooks. Anybody ever hear that name, C.D. Brooks, before? It's what he said. He said, it's easier to give birth than it is to raise the dead. And what, I under, what I've discovered is that sometimes we do spend a lot of energy, most of our energy, going after people who have left our churches. Now, am I saying not to go after them? I'm absolutely not saying that. Jesus left the 90 and 9 and went to get that one to do so. Also, I understand that there are people who are dying every day going to Christless graves because our energy is going back to people who we who has left as opposed to going out and getting new people. The Great Commission starts with what word, everybody? Go. Go ye therefore. Go ye therefore. So that's what we want to do. We want to make sure that we're going for Christ. So how do we give birth and raise the dead. There's nothing that I've seen that helps reinvigorate a church than when new members come in. When that water starts moving, I'm telling you right now, our old members started to come back. They're like, there's something going on at this church. And you know what was funny is that when they got back and they started seeing all these new people, they were like, we don't know any of these people. I was like, well, get to know them. Get to know them because they are here and that's why we are here. Because you understand that a church that is not growing is a church that's dying. You do understand that, right? There, there is no such thing as a middle ground. <laughs> I've had um, people who sometimes they are afraid of growth. They like things to stay the same. But that's a social club. That's not church. Church is for us literally to go and we got to baptize people. We got to teach them. We got to make sure that we are mingling with people. We are helping people have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And I think sometimes we, we lose that as a church because we've built our community here. And we don't let new people in. We don't let new people in. Now, we've got to get away from that. If we plan on raising, uh, uh, if we plan on uh, uh, giving birth and raising the dead, we got to get away from that. Nobody's going to come back to a place they left and it's still the same. I've discovered that the only thing constant in life is change. Now, what we're doing, we may change the method, but understand the message remains the same. The message remains the same. So don't be afraid when we talk about technology, techie stuff, because it's very simple, very easy. And my wife told me not to tell y'all that it's easy, but I'm saying it anyway. So here we go. What we're going to do is uh, go through a step-by-step -step process. And what I mean by step-by-step -step process, I'm going to take you by the hand and show you exactly how to do this. Now, I'm not going to go through all of this like I did last night. We've recorded that for you, so you can go back and look at that recording. But the most important thing for us to get right is going to be our target audience. Got to do that right. And when we do that right, then everything else will fall in place. If you have do it, you're not going to get the results that you're looking for. Got to do that. So that's a step. That's a, uh, 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 what do you call it? One, the number one thing that we want you to do, the most important thing is going to be defining your target audience. We took everybody that was here last night through a worksheet. So we gave out a worksheet. I think we got a few more that are still here. And what we asked them to do was to start determining who the target audience is. Why is that important? Because if, I, if we say that we want to save everybody, truth be told, our churches not, are not equipped to save everybody. It's not. It's not. And when we get people that come into our church that we're ill equipped to, to uh, take care of or to to um, minister to them, then guess what they do? They leave and they're probably not coming back. 
So what we want to do is understand who we're talking to so that we can understand their need. And once we understand their need, we'll figure out how to get to them. We talked to you about uh, market research last night. Uh, one of the ways to do that, there's a website called Mission Insight. Mission Insight, and we put it up there, I believe, on the screen. It's on the screen right there. If you go there, Mission Insight has taken the mystery out of all of this. That you have everything that you need to see who is in your community. And guess what? It's based on ministry. It's based on ministry. So you're not just getting a random bunch of facts about your community. What you're getting is information about your community so you'll know how to minister to your community. So that, that's what you want to do, start with market research. We talked about analyzing your data, creating your personas. We had fun with that one. Identify uh, your pain points and needs. One of the things we talked about last night was this. Now, if you have an itch on your back and I'm being the helpful person that I am, and I come and scratch your elbow. I'm scratching, you're itching, but what is it helping? But guess what our churches are doing? The exact same thing. We're busy, we got stuff going on, but who is it helping? Who is it helping? But once we identify who our target audience is, we understand what their needs are, we understand what their pain points are, we can talk directly to that pain point. We gave a bunch of examples last night, and I uh, gave you a live example of how we did things at our church and, and exactly what that looks like. And that's when we did the exercise. We talked also last night about creating your landing page. Do me a favor, bring up that uh, landing page that, I, that we have on the, uh, for, for our church. If you don't mind, put that on the screen real quick. Because what we did, we talked about this last night, but what I wanna do is show you real life what that looks like. Yes, there's a handsome guy right there, but pay attention. And everybody did not say amen. All right, so here is what we see. If you look there, I'm not sure if you guys can read that. If we, can we, oh, you haven't seen it yet. Oh, it's up there, I'm sorry. Can, can we put it up, up here? There we go. All right. So if you see, experience the warmth of what? Community. Go on down. Go on up a little bit. Go on up a little bit. All right. Stop right there. Discover our worship. You're going to do what? Connect, reflect, and celebrate. Go on up a little bit more. You're going to see something else here. All right. Stop right there. What's that word? Connect. All right. And look at this, uh, the, the, the uh, graphic right there. We have a place for who? Where's that place? The arrow's pointing you to it. Where's that place? There it is. Go on up a little bit more for me. There you go. Come and be a part of something special. Forge lasting what, everybody? Relationships. Look at the graphic. What does it say? You belong where? And it has a big old heart right there. Who do you think we're talking to? Somebody looking for community. We discovered that in our area, our target audience are people who are lonely. They're lonely. They want to have a place to belong. They want to find community. And guess how much it costs us to be kind to people? Nothing but our time. There's nothing like doing evangelism on a zero dollar budget. Doc Wagner, wouldn't you love to have an evangelistic meeting with zero budget and have guaranteed results? Absolutely. And this thing right here doesn't get tired. It works 24-7. So when a person goes to our landing page and we know that they're lonely, it's going to connect them to our church because we're telling them we want you here. I put the video up there so that uh, oh, he changed it. So I put the video up there because people learn differently. Some people want to read. Some people just want to watch the video. That's what they want to do. So when you do this, make sure you do that. And on every section of the page, you'll notice that there's a button there that says plan your visit. Plan your visit. Plan your visit. Plan your visit. Why? Because it, the more you read through this page, the more I'm engaging you, the more I want you to plan your visit. It goes to a... a a calendar where they can actually plan their visit to which Sabbath that they want to join our church. I mean, I say join our church, but visit our church. So, yeah, they're going to eventually join. <laughs> 
All right, we can go back to the presentation. So that's when we're talking about creating a landing page. That's an example of what your landing page can look like, okay? But you have to determine who your target audience is, who you're talking to in that moment. And when you're doing that, then you create your landing page for that individual. Basically what you're doing is talking directly to them. And so we did the exercise, did we? Okay, let's go through here. We did the step-by-step -step guide, how to do that. And so now you guys should have the information you need to create your landing page. So this is where we'll start today when we talk about create an offer that adds value. Now, how important is that? How many of us like doing stuff that wastes our time? Let me see your hand. Absolutely no one. We don't want, we don't want our time wasted. So what we do is when we're, we, we want to create an offer that adds value to a person's life. So once I know what your pain point is, remember when I talked about you uh, itching on your back, once I understand that's where your pain point is, I can come and I can start scratching on your back. You can tell me right, left, up, down, whatever, but I'm in the general area. I know what you need, and then you're going to have relief. So that's what we're going to do today is figure out how to do that as well. So as we're looking here, uh, let's move it to the next one here. There we go. Thank you. So here's our step by step guide again. What we're going to do, we're going to um, look at define our target audience. That's going to be the very first thing we got to do. We got to look at identify their pain points, because once again, we need to talk to that person. And then we choose the format that we want our offer in. We can do we can do it in an ebook. We can do it in white paper. We can do it in um, whatever form we want, a PDF, whatever form we want to do it. But we've got to add value to that person. Case in point, last night we talked about how we wanted to build our young adult team at our church. We had zero young adults who were coming to our church. Remember, I told you we had an aging congregation. So we had to figure out what our community needed, what the young adults in our area needed. So as we looked and did the research, we understood they needed eight biblical things People who were looking at the Bible were looking at eight biblical things. And so what we did is put together something called the best life blueprint. At this time, there was a song by a guy by the name of Lil Duval. I know that nobody here knows that song, but it was called Living Your Best Life. Yeah, and it was a hit. So I just took what Lil Duval was talking about because I knew they were listening to it. And I said, okay, if you want your best life, here's a blueprint for you how to do that. It was based on biblical principle. And the young adults in our area ate that thing up. And let me show you what happened here um, with that. We can, um, they, they, can all, they can see me, but we can keep it, oh, I'm sorry. Let me let, let, me let you do your, your job. And let me just do my job, okay? So this is what we did. We had what's called the best life blueprint. And what we did, was put that together and start, uh, we, we uh, loaded the top end of the funnel, put the ad together for that. And do you know that people start clicking on, on that ad? In order to download it, you had to give me your name, your uh, phone number, and your email address. Why is that important? Because I need to build a relationship with you. I, what I did was create an offer that I knew that they wanted and they gave me their information in return. And it was amazing. We did something else called the, uh, we just took, and I don't know if I should say this, but all we did was take the amazing facts that was online and created something called the Lost Day in History, because I wanted to see how many people in our community actually want to know more about the Sabbath. And do you know people started to bite on that? We just did it as an ebook. We did another thing called, uh, we know, noticed that people were uh, having some challenges with uh, fear because we were still coming out of, out of COVID. Then COVID would peek his head back in the door. So people were afraid. They were dealing with fear. So we did something called uh, facts over, facts are, um, faith is greater than fear. And we put it into a prayer book. An ebook. It cost us zero dollars to produce it. And when people wanted to look at it, they gave us their name, their email, and their phone number. We did something every year we do something that's called a 21 day fast, Daniel fast. I discovered that there are people who, who want to know about the 21 day Daniel fast. 
So I went home, I pulled together some information, put it into an ebook, put it online, and people started to uh, gravitate towards that as well. Only thing we did was create an offer that we knew that our audience wanted. And because they wanted it, they gave us their information. Once you get their information, then you can start to minister to them. All right, so does this actually work? Boom, that's just some examples of some people that have come through our funnel. You see that all these people are young folks, young adults, all ages, all, uh, uh, all genders, different nationalities. And what's happening is that these people are coming to our church and they're joining our church because that's what we want them to do, right? Yeah, that's the key. And they do this because we are building rapport with them coming from online to getting them to the church. Once you get them to the church, you can start your discipleship process. This is the first thing that we did was called a Bible cafe. Now, don't, don't throw stones at me because <laughs> it was initially called the Bible coffee cafe. And some of the saints had a problem with that word coffee. So I just called it the Bible cafe. And what we did on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we just had a Bible class, an Amazing Facts Bible class. And we built it just as that. Do you want to have a community Bible study? Yes, we do. And everybody came, including the dog. So understand that when you do this, it's going to yield results. This is our young adult group. We remember, we started from zero and now we are 20 plus young people. There's some of our, uh, our church leaders that are there uh, that are representing with the young adults. Um, we have here, we talked last night about our men's program that the young adults came up with called The Bridge. And so the young adults who came to our church started working. They, we, they wanted to do something. So we figured out, okay, what do you guys want to do? So The Bridge, it, it's, it, if you look at these people, they're probably two people out of those 30 plus men that are members of our church. And I thought everybody would have said amen to that. Can you imagine men? who don't belong to your church. We had so many testimonies from this. We had one guy who, uh, he's a, uh, he owns a, a restaurant and he came and brought free food for everybody. And this is what he said. He said, man, as a kid, we used to play around this church, but I've never been inside. He grew up in the area. He grew up in the area. So what we're doing with the bridge is getting older men to conversate with younger men and bridging that gap. We're bridging that gap, that's what, that's what it's called. But it would not have happened had we not had our online presence, had we not started drawing our young adults, because a young adult person came up with this idea. This was not our ministry leaders, it wasn't the pastor. The Holy Spirit used one of our young adults who had just started coming back to church to do this. So here's another thing that happened. MPUC, Spark Tank Funds, innovation. We went to a place, we were invited to come to a place. Mind you, that year we started out with zero young adults, zero. Got them in there, they started working. They were invited to come to the MPUC. They, gave, they pitched their idea and they left with a $10,000 grand prize. It is amazing what Holy Spirit is doing. There's an article that was written in the, um, we, I think our thing is called the Gleaner, uh, for them, uh, what they did. So it's like not just our conference, but the union is recognizing what we're doing with our churches. And it's such an amazing journey. You guys heard me last night talking about uh, the time I spent in the Deep South with a two-member church. Two. Two members, my mom and my dad. That's how I know it's only two members. So, <laughs> so we were talking and they were like, well, you know, uh, you know, can you do something for us? And I was like, you know, that would be good to figure out if it works in the rural area. So what we did, we did an eight week campaign. We spent less than $5,000 to do the full campaign. And we did not have a 13 week meeting. We had a three day meeting, three days. We talked about three things, the Sabbath, change of the Sabbath, and then we talked about the second coming of Jesus, and people were absolutely ready. This, a two-church member church went to being jam-packed in eight weeks. 
less than $5,000 with a three-day uh, evangelistic meeting. Guys, I'm telling you right now, it works. It works. And it can work right here at Fresno. So how do we do this? We use a principle called the AOTA method. It's a framework in marketing that we found out how we engage people on a, different, on a deeper level. So what you want to do is spark their awareness. I will get their awareness. You got to get them to start looking at your stuff. And once again, this is why it's so important to spend a lot of time on getting your target audience right. So when you start it, people will start looking because you cannot attract the interest unless they become aware of who you are. So the awareness is first, then the interest, then they get a desire and from there they take action. And that's where a lot of our funnels that we call uh, deci uh, 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 digital evangelism falls short. We don't expect a person, or we don't call a person to an action. You gotta call them to an action. <clears throat> gotta take a person by the hand and ask them to do more. Now, let me tell you how simple this is. And I know that you, we don't frequent restaurants that have drive throughs and burgers, I know. I get it. But if you go to a drive through or you go into that burger place, they're gonna have, you're gonna order a sandwich and they're gonna ask you, do you want a combo, right? There it is, upsell. Then from there, they're gonna ask you if you wanna supersize it. <laughs> so what you're doing is they got you in the door, then they gave you something else, and they gave you something else. They gave you choices, they took you by the hand and walked you up to where they wanted you to be. We've got to do the same thing as churches. Take people by the hand, walk them up and say, okay, this is what I want you to do. I want you to get baptized. Yeah. And it's so amazing that when you ask people to get baptized, guess what they do? They get baptized. That's what they do. I've had a few people tell me, well, you know, pastor, I've got to learn a little bit more. And I say, okay, what you got to learn? Let's talk about it right now. Let's talk about it. What you need to know? If you just need more information, let's talk. Let's, we can do that. We got a book with 66 books in it. <laughs> we can go all the way through it. Let's do that. But once again, guys, you got to make spend time on that target audience. Make sure you talk to the right people. So how does this IATA method work? Here's actually one of the uh, posts that we did. I'm not sure if you can make this bigger. Can, it, can everybody see this? No, not really. All right, just a little bit. Can we make it a little bit bigger, just a little bit bigger so they at least see the, the title? Well, the title says, Feeling Alone in a Crowded World. Because remember, I told you our target audience we were talking to are who? People who are lonely. So if you're lonely and you see this feeling alone in a crowded world, what you gonna say? You gonna say, well, yeah, I am. How'd you know? Because we're talking to you. Uh, okay, we can't. Uh, let's, <laughs> down just a little bit. There we go. I, I'll just read it to everybody. So a little bit more. But t t let, j just put it back to the full screen there, and we'll just go through it. Thank you. All right. So <laughs> remember I told you we're, we're looking for young professionals who have families. I'm not, I, I told them last night, I'm not sure if I told you guys that today. So we're looking for young professionals who have families. Young professionals who have families are typically busy, right? Typically, because they got jobs, they may have school, they got kids, so I know they got homework. They got a lot of stuff to do. So what do you see in that first sentence? In these busy times, it's easy to feel lost and disconnected. I'm talking directly to that individual because I spent the time to figure out what the community needs, who my target audience is. And I won't bore you with everything because some of you guys may not be, at, at, uh, be here. But look at the third line. This win, why not take a step towards a new beginning? This Saturday, I'm not afraid to say Saturday at all. I will tell you, we go to church on Saturday. That's 
what I want you to do. I want you to come to my church on Saturday. Join us this Saturday and you go down to the next line. Join, join uh, at, and I took this out. You can put your church's name there. Put your service time. Uh, contact us and you put the information there. Then look at this. Here's my call to action. Click here to plan your visit now. And when they click that button, they go to that landing page that we showed you at first. And then they go, they go into our funnel. You have to talk to them once again and scratch where they're itching. It's very simple. You just, once you figure out the, the model and understand the framework, you just put the words to it. That's all it is. So we're talking to young professionals who have families. We know they're feeling lonely, so we know what they need. All right, next screen. But all this information will be here for you. You guys can go through that, um, go through that and get it. So let's put our exercise to work. And here, if I can have someone help us out with this right here, we could pass these out to everybody, if you don't mind. And I'll take one off the top there. Thank you. Got it. Got it. Thank you. And so I left you guys this worksheet right here and understanding how you can develop that model. Develop this framework so that what you're doing is getting what you need for your church. You're going to start out with awareness. You're going to start out with interest. You're going to start out with desire and also action. So what we're going to do is take a moment to go back, put this up back on the screen for me, the, um, the example. All right. So what we're going to do is take a moment and look at my example and we're going to follow through here so that when we leave today, you have a working example of how this should go. Because it's easy for me to stand up here and tell you how it should go, but if we work through it together. I'm sure you have a better sense of direction of what we need to do. So the first thing we want to do is build awareness. Build awareness. So let's take, for instance, um, I think, Pastor, you had someone, uh, uh, a, uh, what do you call it, a person last night that we were talking about, uh, if I can remember correctly, female uh, who was about what, what age? 18 to 35, young adult, and they uh, were working. Correct. So they, they, didn't, they didn't have a lot of disposable income, and I can't remember if they had children or not. They did have children. And so we discovered that last night that their pain point was what? Help me remember. Domestic violence. So they're dealing with domestic violence in their life, which means that they're looking for a safe place, okay? They're looking for a safe place. If, you, if you've ever dealt with domestic violence, you want to be in a safe place. And so if we're taking that, taking that person, how will we get, how will we start with the awareness? What will we say for the awareness? If you look at my example, talking about people who are lonely, we just asked the question, feeling alone in a crowded world. What could we say to increase our awareness? Are you looking for a place of safety? Okay, that's a great question. All right, what, what did you say? Love shouldn't hurt, okay. Are you looking for a place of safety? Love shouldn't hurt anybody else? Got, a, got an example that you wanna share with the team? Oh, I'm sorry, I thought you had your hands up. How can I help? Okay, that's, that's, a, that's general. But remember, we're talking to a person that, that's dealing with domestic violence and they're looking for a safe place. We gotta, we gotta be very specific, yes sir. Okay. Now, what would that sound like, though? We we're just brainstorming right now. What does that sound like? And it's good, by the way, it's good to get a team of people so that you can kind of bounce ideas off each other so you can kind of hammer it down. You're going to say? It's not your fault. Okay. It's not your fault. 
All right. But what's not your fault? Remember, we, it's like you it's like you are face to face with this young lady. That's our persona. What are we going to say to her? We're on the right track. Yes, ma'am. Safe refuge, safe refuge for survivors. Now, what if she doesn't see herself as a survivor? She still is in victim mode. Now, that's good, and I like that, and I like that. We want to talk to them without acknowledging the victim part. Yeah. So, there's a, yes, sir. Are you comfortable with what? Your situation? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we, we had a great start. And guys, we're not going to finish this today. It's just to get the juices flowing. Yes, ma'am. Feeling stuck in what? In your situation. Okay. Okay. So you guys are doing great. Great start. Yes, sir. A lot. Uh, no, sir. I just looked at Christ methods alone and I figured out what the people needed and how can I mingle with them. So when I when I saw when we got the information back, uh, once again, go to missioninsight.com and let them do all the work for you. They'll tell you what your community needs. They'll tell you what are the high points. And once we saw the word the people were lonely, we knew, oh, man, we have community here. Because our slogan is welcome to Sharon, where the arms of Christ are always open. So how can we talk to the person who's a young professional who's lonely? They have children. What can we do? They're looking for community. Oh. Now I see feeling alone in a crowded world. Boom. It worked. It doesn't have to be. Matter of fact, keep it super simple. Keep it super, because it, it, it used to be where our attention span was about eight seconds. I'm sure it's a lot lower now. <laughs> and when you're on social media, guess what you're doing? Scrolling. So what you want to do is stop the scroll. It's not like stopping the scroll for something that you're interested in. There's thousands of things that you see every day, but you're going to stop on that thing that you're interested in. And so that's what you're doing. And once again, you guys are doing great. We're not going to finish it today, but at least I wanted to kind of get us in the right direction. So once again, come up with a team of people and start thinking about it. But there's some psychology behind it, because once again, you got to talk to that person's pain point and tell them that you understand their need. And once they understand their need, then let them know that you can provide the solution. But be prepared to provide that solution. Be provide, uh, prepared to do that. Because as people started to come into our church, I noticed that we couldn't have grumpy people at the door. <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> Brother so-and-so so -and -so, so -and -so had a hard day, and you know they're taking it out on the new people. No, let's move you over here where the money... Can you count? Let's put you on the treasury team. <laughs> so that, that's what we do. Now, let's look at um, interest. Now... We have the awareness and look at what we put for the interest. How do we now that we got them looking, we, we stopped the scroll. How do we get them interested? Look at the second ver, uh, I almost said verse, the thing that we have here. In a busy, uh, in a, uh, what did it say? In these busy times, it's easy to feel lost and disconnected. If you're if you've been feeling isolated or just need a welcoming place to connect, we understand you're not alone in this. So that's how we kept them reading. So once you stop the scroll, you got to keep them reading. What we're telling them is that, hey, I acknowledge your problem and I understand your problem. I didn't ask them to do anything yet. Why? Because we're building rapport with the person as they continue to read. At this church or at Sharon Church, we believe in building a family, not just filling a building. Why do we put that there? Because we understand that a lot of people feel that churches want you there for your money. We want you to come to help build this next project, to do that, to do that. And we're dispelling that myth. And we're saying 
that we're here to connect with you and to welcome you. And we're here to build you and not just a building. Now, I got that from uh, Eight Mile with Eminem. Don't tell anybody that I watched that the pastor watched that. But Eminem, he was, uh, they were in a rap battle, right? And in the rap battle, Eminem said, the only way I'm going to win this battle is to know what he's going to say about me. And that's what, that's where I got that psychology from. I know what you're going to say about church. You've probably tried church before, but you found out that this thing, they were just talking about, you know, getting numbers or getting my money, but we're interested in you. We're more than just church services. We are a community, there's that word, where everyone is seen, heard, and loved. Part of, of helping people solve loneliness is helping them to feel seen, to help them feel like they've been heard, and to make sure that they feel loved. We hit all three of those in that one little sentence. You see how short these sentences are? It's not perfect English, but it's snappy. It's, you're there, you're doing what you need to do. This Saturday, why not take a step towards a new beginning? We're encouraging them. Yes, sir. You got, you got to start where you are, preacher. We took the people. As a matter of fact, last night we talked about that a little bit. We, we developed scripts. And once again, this is, this is the part about being high touch. So the people who were coming into the funnel and, and scheduling their visit, we had our senior saints who can use the phone. They can do that. We gave them a script and say, hey, this is what we want you to say to the people who are signing up. And that week, when a person signs up, they get a call from us and they know uh, uh, Sister So-and-So, Sister Mabel, whatever her name may be. So when they get there, we want to connect them with Sister Mabel because they've already made that. So you got to just work with what you have. Got to work with what you have and, and let automation do the, do, do the nurturing for you and work with what you got. There's no way that I could have asked my congregation to do anything more than what they were capable of doing. And they could make phone calls. Matter of fact, they preferred to make phone calls. And so that's what we did. Um, greeters. We can do that. We can do that. You can be 80 years old and be at the door. You can smile, be loving. You can be a row captain. So when you come in, we want to bring the people. We talked about that last night, too. Don't put your people who are fresh to your church on the road with people who you know are cantankerous. Don't do it. You're asking for trouble. <laughs> Get yourself a row captain. They can be eight, 70, 80, 90. They can be a row captain and make sure that the greeters are bringing those people to the row. They don't know that they're not supposed to sit on that row. They don't know. You bring them there. You, you put them there so that you know that they're going to be nurtured while you're there. And this is the part about being high touch. You've got to make sure that they have that human connection. Otherwise, they could have stayed online. Got to have that. But you, that's a great question, Bishop. You got to make sure that you're using what you have. That, that's all you can do. I would, it would have been great to have my young adults, but you see, once we got the young adults, we started the bridge. We started other programs because they, they could do it. But there's no way we could have done that if we just had the, uh, the senior saints there. Not saying that, they, that they, they can't do it, but I understood there was a deep learning curve. We would have spent more time training them than actually just doing it. And sometimes you got to fly the plane while you're building it. That's what you got to do. Yes, ma'am. Great question. I love that question because what we have, I don't want to go all the way back to that slide, but yeah, what we do is once we have a funnel and it's working, we start getting people in, then we start the next funnel. We leave that one to keep working because you got your landing page, you don't have to redo it. But you put your energy towards the new thing. Like uh, last night we talked about uh, Q1 or first quarter of the year, what we wanted to do was build our young adult program. 
Quarter, quarter number two, what we wanted to do was build our children's program. So we put energy in Q2 towards the children, but we didn't neglect the, um, the, the young adults because we wanted to keep that going. So once you kind of set it, it keeps going. So great question, great question. But also, once you, once you uh, start getting those people in, now you have more hands that can help. I'm not sure how you guys feel about this, but I'll, I'll say for me, with our church, we put people to work before they became members. We did. I mean, I had an aging congregation. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> You have to. And that's why we did our strategic planning. We, we separated quarter one, then quarter two, and we placed all of our energy towards quarter two. Now we've got young adults who are able-bodied, who have kids. Now you got your kids coming to church. Let's show you how you can minister to them. You have to have someone, at least one person, who's able to do it. I, I suggest doing a team, but the pastor cannot do it all. Can't do it all. And the pastor who tries to do it all will stroke out you know, and, and then you won't like us anyway, so yeah. I'm only teasing, I'm only teasing, I'm only teasing, I'm only teasing. But yeah, it's, it's a group effort. We have to do this thing together. And so as you are growing, you're pulling in pieces. Now, you may want to start somewhere else other than young adults. You may have something else that you want to do. I'm just saying what my church needed because we didn't have any young people at all, none. I was the youngest person in our congregation. That's bad. <laughs> I know I'm old. And so, yeah, you may want to try something different. You may want to do something different. You may want to start with just men or start with women or start with whatever you feel like your church's need is. But here's the thing. Make sure that you're able, you're able to take care of the people who are coming in. Once again, if you see a pain point, you've got to be able to meet that need. There's no need of figuring out what the need is, getting people coming to your church and you're not able to, to meet that need. Like if we had a, a done children first, we would have been lost. We hadn't had a, a vacation Bible school or a vacation, we call it vacation Bible experience in years. <laughs> so what we look like bringing in kids and they just sitting there looking at me. <laughs> that makes no sense. <laughs> so you gotta start where you are and then start building from there. Another thing that we did, too, is that we, we built, um, we, we got a bunch of teenagers that started to come to our church inadvertently. We didn't even try. But because we were getting young adults who had kids, some of them were teenagers. So we had enough teenagers to, to develop something that we call the teen lounge. Teen lounge, we got about 20 plus, uh, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, teenagers that are down there, but their church service is way different than our church service. Their church service has to do with real life situations, what's going on with them in school, what's going on with them in their personal lives. And so my wife started it out, but then we got one of the church members to take it over. Why? Because we got to make sure that the church is taking ownership of what's going on at their church. Got to make sure we do that. So there's some things that are going to spring forth just out of just people coming. And you don't throw it away because you're not prepared for it. What you do is that you say, OK, this is what we have. What can we do? Here's my here's my thing, uh, uh, Bishop. Whenever I'm at board meeting, no is never an answer. It's always, well, what can we do? Oh, we don't have this. We don't have we can go with what we don't have all day. But what can we do? Yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Correct, correct. But you were meeting a need, that's why people came. And that's what you want to do. I saw a flyer on the table and I, I kind of perused through it. I don't think that I saw where you can go online and put your information in. But whatever you do, make sure whatever event that you're having, whatever situation that you're having, giving away food, whatever it is you're doing, make sure people have a way of signing up, a, p- a way of registering for your event. Because that's how you're going to capture their information. Once you capture their information, then you can start nurturing those relationships. You can start sending out your church newsletter that simply says what you guys are doing next, what's coming next. We have, um, so yeah, just wanted, I won't keep talking about that. We'll, we'll keep moving here. Social media advertising, this is what everybody's been waiting on. But we cannot start here. We've got to do everything else we talked about first. We got to do that right. Then we can start with our social media advertising. We can start with that. Now, here's what we're going to do this step by step for you real quick. Once again, number one thing is define your target audience. You are not going to get away from that. (laughs) Got to define your target audience. Why? Because you can put something on social media and then you start getting all these crazy people who are saying negative things about your um, about your post because it's not helping anybody. You cast your net out to everybody. And guess what happens when you cast your net out to everybody, you just get anybody. Nobody wants that. So we want to make sure you're doing your target audience. You want to choose your platform. Who are you going to go with? You're going to go with Facebook. You're going to go with uh, Instagram. You're going to go with YouTube. You got to choose which ones you're going to go with. And you can do multiple, but make sure that you're doing it right. Make sure you're doing it right. When you get into... um, um, Meta or Facebook, Instagram, that Meta's that company that owns both of those, YouTube, understand that there's something called an algorithm. The algorithm can be your best friend or your worst enemy. <laughs> if you don't do it the right way, then the algorithm will just send your stuff to anybody. Because it, it, has, it has to take time to learn. But you can, you can cut that learning curve by being very specific about who you want to reach, who you are targeting, who you, and also with your message and how you're doing it. You want, also want to set your budget. Decide how much money you want to spend. And our Plan Your Visit campaign, when we launched that, that campaign, we got 20 people, 21 people, less than 30 days to come to our church for less than $250. Yes for less than $250. It costs so much less to do this here than to do it on TV or radio. It's so unbelievable. It's almost unfair. You can launch a campaign for about $1 or $5 a day if you wanted to. Now, you may not see very much return. We did 20 bucks a day. That's what we did, 20 bucks. And we got, we got 20 people uh, to do that. You want to create compelling content. We already talked about how to create your offer. That's what you want to do. You want to find out what the people need and then give it to them. That's what we want to do. We want to select target, uh, our targeting options. You want to look at um, your, your, your ages. You want to look at your location, your gender. So what we decided to do was look at our zip code. And what we did was a fit, we, we discovered that people are willing to drive to church about 15 minutes. So we did a 15 minute radius around our church. I discovered that nobody in our congregation lived in our, in our community, not one single person. So we identify as what's called a commuter church, which is okay, which is okay. But we've been called as that church to serve that community. So we did a 15 minute radius uh, uh, um, on our social media to say, OK, we want to reach people that live within a 15 minute drive of our church. So you may want to do something different. You can segment it differently. You can do uh, just this neighborhood and then this neighborhood. Or you can do everybody within a 15 minute radius or you can do somebody that's totally somewhere else. Whatever you guys decide you, you want to do, you can do that. My thing is just decide how you want to do it. 
Next thing you want to do is launch your campaign and monitor the performance. Launching your campaign is simply on Meta, Instagram, or Facebook. It's just simply going into the ad manager and walking through those, um, walking through those uh, uh, questions that they have there for you. Now, here's the thing. Don't let it overwhelm you. Don't let it overwhelm you. Take your time. You've already decided who you want to talk to. You've decided where they are. Just simply take that checklist and fill in the blanks when you're filling in the information for Facebook, YouTube, or, um, well, it's, it's Google. Google is YouTube. And, uh, and, and Instagram or TikTok, whichever one you want to do, you can even do Snapchat. But if you do the homework first, you'll be, you'll be really, really pleased with your outcome. Then what you want to do is optimize your ads for better performance. What does that mean? That means that I looked at what was going on, and I, I was honest with myself, this is working or this is not working. If it's not working, throw it out. <coughs> yes, it was a great idea. It looked great on paper, but in reality, it's not working. So let's throw it away. Let's figure, out, let's figure something else out. Don't be one of those people that it was my idea and I'm going to die with it. <laughs> You're going to waste all your money and be frustrated when it comes to social media, I promise you. But be real with yourself and you want to optimize your ad. You want to take a look at it. Maybe the first, you want to give it like a week to let the algorithm learn what it is you're trying to do and start placing your ads in the right place. <coughs> Then you want to look at your metrics and, and it will tell you who is, um, it, it will tell you uh, if your ad is, well, it won't tell you if your ad is working or not. I'll put it like this. You can look at the numbers and tell if your ad is effective or not. What you want to do is be below $1 when it comes to um, ROI. ROI is return on investment. You want your click-through rate, thank you. You want your click-through rate to be, um, at least 40, 50 percent or higher. You want that to be. You want that to be good because that click-through rate shows you that the per, that you, people are looking at your ad, but they're also clicking on it. When they they only get to your landing page if they click on the ad. So you want to make sure you're doing that. So you got to have ad, uh, eyes on that. <clears throat> and the next thing you want to do is develop your follow-up sequence. Now, once again, Bishop, I got an aging congregation who likes to use the telephone. Nobody wants to deal with email, so I had to figure out an automated way so when people click on the ad, they fill out the form, they automatically get a sequence sent to them. Matter of fact, when you, I want all of you guys to come and visit my church, okay? And when you visit my church, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. When you visit my church, you're going to get what's called a connect card. Connect card is very simple. I actually have one in my... Um, and my, uh, what do you call it, bag, but I didn't bring my bag in here. But in, on your Connect card, you're going to get the person's information. Also, we have uh, uh, something on our, uh, on our announcement reel where it says text welcome, the word welcome to a particular number. Once you do that, you're now entering into my world. I got you. I got you at this point. And once you get there, it's going to give you a 14-day sequence that I'd never have to look at. Never. Day one, while you're sitting in church, it's going to greet you. It's going to say, hey, thank you so much for coming to share and glad that you're here. A few hours after service, it's going to send them a survey. Boom. Thank you for coming. We want to know how we did today. What do you think? We only had one knucklehead. Give us a D. I don't know who invited that person. But anyway, <laughs> everybody else gives us A's and that kind of helps us understand where we are. Are we, how's our, wor is our worship effective? But once again, don't be upset if someone gives you a D. You need to know that. You need to know that what you're doing is not working. Yeah, you got you to gotta be open to that. <clears throat> so that's good feedback. So that's a few hours after service. Next day, that's Sunday, we're, they're going to get something saying, hey, thank you for coming to church yesterday. We really enjoyed having you. And we're looking forward to seeing you next week. And we're praying for you. They're going to, throughout the week, they're going to get scripture. They're going to get um, encouragement. They're going to get all these things. And Friday, guess what happens on Friday? We have church tomorrow. <laughs> looking forward to seeing you at church tomorrow. And then we do that for 14 days. Do that for 14 days. And yes, ma'am.
Oh, that's a great question. Oh, I love that question. Yes. Yes, we do. That's another thing that senior saints can do very well is pray for folks. But guess what happens? We give the prayer group their name, and now when they come back, they know the individual because they've been praying for them. They've been praying for them. You got to make sure that pr- your, the church works on prayer. Yeah, we got to have that. So you, you're absolutely correct. I love that question. So you got to have that. <clears throat> and there's nothing like having the prayer because it will ask them. The system will ask them, is there anything we can pray for you about? When they send that prayer request in, guess who else gets it? I get it. So when Mabel Smith comes through the door, says, Smith, thank you so much for coming back to church. Hey, listen, we've been praying about X, Y, Z. How's that coming along? Now, they're going to instantly feel connected because I'm praying for them and the church is praying for them. Yeah. So that's good stuff. Great, great question. So you want to make sure you have your follow up sequence. A couple of follow up sequences that we have. We have the one when people plan their visit. We send out information to them to let them know, hey, we received your information. You're going to receive, we let them know you're going to receive a call from someone from the church so that when um, brother or sister so-and-so call, they can say, hey, I'm calling you from Sharon Church and the person's expecting the call, okay? They're expecting the call and they're more likely to answer the phone. What we, uh, also they get, uh, once they get uh, that, um, let's see. So you're planning your visit. We have that one. We have one for, uh, visitors who actually attend the church, so you get into that sequence. We have one for baptism when you decide you want to get baptized. We have that sequence telling you, uh, uh, congratulations on your decision, telling you what to bring, what we have, also uh, prayer, also encouragement, uh, inspiration, all that stuff there. So those are the ones that we have. You can develop your own, do something else if you like, but those are nurturing sequences that you can set up and nobody ever has to go back and check. Now we have a two-way communication system. That means that the person can respond back to us. Most times I'm the one who gets the response because what it do, when the person responds, it's gonna email somebody. And as a pastor, I make sure my email is part of every chain in the church. I wanna know everything that's happening. And so we're able to pass those information off to different uh, departments and get people involved that way. So these are the follow-up sequences that we have. Uh, Let's go back to the, um, yeah, there we go. So what you want to do with your, I I use what's called a Seinfeld sequence. Everybody ever ever hear the show, anybody ever hear the show called Seinfeld? You know the purpose of Seinfeld, what that show was about? It was about nothing. They told compelling stories that kept you coming back next week. So that's what I use, it's called a Seinfeld sequence. It's about nothing. I tell you compelling stories to keep you interested to read my next email. That's what I do. So you wanna start with a clear purpose, make sure that you have a clear goal in mind, whether it's for the person to schedule a meeting with you or to get an update or whatever it is you wanna do, you wanna make sure you do that. You wanna use the Seinfeld uh, once again, It allows me to um, um, create momentum by focusing on small wins and building up from there. Then you want to keep it concise. Nobody wants to read a 30-page email, especially men. If you don't want me to read something, send me a long text. (laughs) It ain't going to (laughs) happen. So you want to be concise as possible because you know that the people that you're dealing with don't have a whole bunch of time to read stuff. And if they did have a whole bunch of time, then their, their attention spans are probably gonna be all over the place anyway. So what you wanna do is be concise and short and sweet as possible. Next thing you wanna do is you wanna personalize the message. What we do, we have a, um, it'll, it, it'll go like hi, and then it'll have a space where we can tell the system to call the person's first name. So if I have a list of 300 people, I don't have to sit there and type in everybody's name. It will pull the person's name from the database and put, hi, Jim, hi, Joan, hi, Bob, hi, Bill, and it personalizes the message because people are more likely to read something that's personalized to them than just sending out something general. They really think that you are intentional about Uh, And you are, you you really are being intentional about uh, uh, connecting with them. You want to provide value. 
Make sure every follow-up email provides some kind of value. I do all kind of giveaways in my emails. One of them is uh, an ebook that I came up with that talks about my life story. It cost me nothing to do that but time. Just did that, put the ebook together, tell them about my life story, tell them about the Seventh Day Adventist Church, tell them about the uh, events that are happening at the church. Just give them some type of value to let them know that you really are valuing them. The next thing you want to do is you want to end with next steps. Now, in my first email, I say to them something like, hey, well, thank you for reading this email and I'm going to send you something tomorrow. It's going to be free, so make sure you open it up. And that's when I send the freebie on the next email. And then I keep telling them the next day, the next day, the next day, and then I'm inviting them to church. And then they come to church. All right. So any questions so far before we go into this section right here? Yes, ma'am. That's a great question. And I get this question all the time about the conversion rate. So here, here's, I've not calculated what the conversion rate is because I'm converting for baptisms. Yeah, and I've not done the math on that. I can, but I have not yet. Yeah, I, I can, but I have not done the, done the math on that yet. So, but if you look at the system, it's not going to tell you about how many people that got baptized that came through the funnel. But I can sit down and do that, but I have not done it yet. Oh, but sign up. Yeah, it's right. Correct, correct. So for me, conversion rate is how many people are converting to a sale. A sale for us is baptism. But we're talking about uh, the click-through rate. The click-through rate, we're somewhere around 40, 50% is where we are with the click-through rate. Yeah, 40%, 50% with that. So that means for everybody else, that means that 40% of the people, 40, 50% of the people who see our ad, who, inter who interact with it, actually click on it which is pretty good, considering that you can have um, a reach of about 7,000, depends on where you put your money, how you put your money. So great question, great question, great question, yeah. Great question. You've got to be honest with yourself as a church and figure out who you are. Some churches have this, what do you call it, picture of grandeur, I think that's what they call it, uh, <laughs> where, where we, we remember when we, where we used to be. Guess what? We're not there anymore. We're not there anymore. That's, and that's one of the things that we found in my church, because we, we have all of, our, all of our trophies and trinkets to suggest how great we once were, and some of our minds were still there. In reality, we were not there. We were not there. So how can we get back there? And that's what you want to do is start to de uh, developing your target audience to see, okay, who can we reach and how can we assist them? Another way that you're, you're being honest with yourself, another reason that you're being honest with yourself, because you know what you have to offer. Once again, with this scenario, there's no need for me to launch uh, a funnel for getting, uh, uh, building our children's program, and we don't have anybody there to do it. So we got a bunch of kids that come in, and they're disappointed, and they're less likely to come back. Yes, ma'am. Sure. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Great question. So last night, what we, last night what we talked about was the benefits of collaboration. So like for us, we collaborated with the, the Urban League because they had what we wanted and it cost us nothing to get it. We just had to have them come to our property to do it. So if you can find an organization that specializes in that and have them bring their program to where you are, then that could actually help launch your program for you. And actually you don't need the manpower if you're collaborating with other, other uh, organizations. So we can't be afraid to collaborate with other organizations to do stuff that we, want, we really want to do. My desire was to uh, uh, bring a, a, a people that were, were going to be something that's healthy for them, like a medical van. Uh, we did the medical clinic. We did the dental clinic. We did the HIV testing. We did the um, mental health component to it. We did the A1C testing. And none of our members had to lift a finger in order to get that done. But people came to our church to get it done. And that's what you want to do is have people come to your church to get things done. And you don't have to be the one to, to offer the service somebody else could offer it. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. these social services. Now, I, I think that the county sometimes have people, we're blessed, we have people that work for the county and social services that attend our church. <laughs> but yeah, 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 I think maybe somebody some, from the county may be able to either refer someone or come, but the key to it is, is make sure that we're collaborating with, with comp organizations or with people who can do that. So we can't do it or we don't have the manpower to do it, we collaborate with someone who can, yeah. Great question. All right, any other questions? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, there, <clears throat> on one, on one uh, what do you call it, um, slide, I showed that we did something called the Best Life Blueprint. Uh, we did something called uh, the Sabbath, no, the, 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 the Missing Day in History, something like the Forgotten Day of History which we just took from Amazing Facts and made it into an e-book. Uh, we, we just developed e-books is what we decided to do. But you can do white paper, you can do blogs, you can do podcasts, you can do anything that you're giving value that's going to help that individual. You can uh, put it in uh, one of those type, a blog, you can do that and uh, make sure that they have access to it. The key to it is making sure that you put a, um, a form there so that you're collecting their information before they do access it. So that way you're able to get it. Yeah, I, I see him and then I'll come to you. Um, how to and doing all that <clears throat> That's true, that's true. And, and in, my, in my situation, what, I, what we had to do was once again, make sure that we had somebody at the door, make sure we had somebody on the pews, so that when people came in, they were directed to sit with the row captain. And that, that's, what, that's the extent that our people could do something, and also with the phone calls, that's what they could do. But you're absolutely right. But we also understand too that the 80-20 principle, there are only 20% of the people in the whole church is gonna do something. The 80% are gonna sit back and complain about the 20 who they think are running the church. <laughs> Y'all can't say that, but I can. <laughs> so you wanna make sure that you're putting people to work, putting people in the right places so that they can succeed. What you can't, what I would not recommend is for uh, a church to do something that they're not equipped to do. Because you will lose, your people will come in, they will never come back. So you got one chance to make a first impression. And that impression has to be a good impression. But when you do your target audience and you know who those people are, you know how to minister to those people, you know how to do that. So with us understanding uh, people were coming in lonely, once again, the only thing we had to do was figure out how to provide community for them. So we did, um, what you guys did today was great with the uh, feeding. You know, you get a chance to talk. I met some great people, felt like I was at home. That's good stuff. Uh, you get um, small groups is a good way, uh, but it really depends on, once again, your target audience and what you want to do to make sure you're ministering to those needs.
Yes, ma'am. So the, the question that I would come back to is what need is that meeting if we're, if we're just doing food? Health? Okay. So, so we would have to add that component of how to create healthy meals or how to cook healthy meals. And we may even want to add, depends on the community, how do you create healthy meals on a budget that lower blood pressure, if blood pressure is the issue, or stress, whatever, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let, let, let's let's brainstorm that a little bit because I think you're onto something. Once again, you're already doing it, and we identify what need is it meeting health. Uh, which are there any health challenges in the community that we know of? Obesity or. Uh, HIV, diabetes. Oh, Adventist Health is big here. Get them to come in and do something. Get them to come to your church and do something, yeah. But until they get here, what you can do, if you got people dealing with diabetes, that's a big issue. And so how to control your diabetes through healthy lifestyles and do the cooking class and then you can sit down and eat together and you're developing that fellowship. So that, that's a good way to do it. Once again, you, you, you're being very specific to talking to people who have diabetes or, or blood pressure, but you wanna say it by name. You wanna say, this is what we're offering. And so set up the landing page, have them fill out the form and they will come. Because if I know that there's a way to reverse my diabetes or to control my diabetes uh, and possibly come off of medication now, you can't say that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, if I know that's a possibility, then, yeah, because I'm spending hundreds of dollars each month on medicine. And if I could do better, if I can live longer, have a healthier existence, then, yeah, that's something that I think I'd be interested in doing. Food desert. <clears throat> you know what would work with that? Parents who rely on the public school system for their meals. They don't go to school on the weekend. And there are a lot of parents who send their kids to public school because of the meal programs. They get free lunches or what have you. So you could do that um, and attract people and say, hey, you know, we, we have free meals available for families. You know, bring your kids, not, not drop them off, bring your kids. <laughs> because otherwise they would do, and at that point you could have like um, a Sabbath, uh, a Saturday st uh, story hour. And that way you're feeding them uh, physically and also feeding them spiritually. And do that. You can. We call it children's Sabbath school. They don't know that. Call it children's story hour. That's what we could do. And uh, bring them in. Uh, get them to uh, sign up on the form. And you let them know registration is important because you only have a limited amount of spaces. And that that's another another um, tactic that you can use called scarcity. You can use. Um, um, Limited space or limited time, people who sign up in such a time. But that, that would work. 
That would work. And that way you can immediately track families. You're cooking the food anyway. Now, here's the challenge. Are you going to feed them vegetarian, vegan food, or are you going to feed them meat? You, got, you, you guys got to think about that, what it is you want to do. You can do both. You can, you, you can absolutely do both. But some churches, they don't, they don't want that. So you got to decide you know, as a church what you guys want to do. You absolutely can do both. And as people are coming in, and you can teach them how to cook chicken in a very healthy way. And you can do that. And then, and then you're bringing them to the vegetarian, the vegan lifestyle. You can do that. But for a person that's hungry, and I come, and you didn't tell me that was vegetarian, vegan, I'm uh, that, you know, but, you know, I, I, that's something to consider. So you want to consider that. You want to make sure that you're considering all these points and talk about it as a church amongst yourselves and say, OK, this is what we want to do. And if it's going to be vegetarian and vegan, tell them we have vegetarian, and vegan meals. So when they get here, they'll know. Yes, ma'am. But do we really want to do that? Yes. Well, we want, we want to advertise that then and let them know that we're cooking healthy meals. We want to do that. Yeah, because, yeah, yeah, yeah it, it was delicious. It was delicious. It was delicious. But um, I've been eating vegetarian food for a long time. <laughs> Yeah, but, but once again, as a church, you guys talk about it and figure out what's the best, best path forward for you, okay? Who do you want to invite to your church? What is it that you're willing to do? What can you do without feeling like you're compromising your position and make sure that you are serving the people? So you guys got to figure that out, what, what you want to do, and go from there. But I think that, that's an excellent start. You're already doing it. You got the manpower to do it. It's something that you're apparently good at doing, and you can make it happen. Yes, sir. Gotcha. Excellent point, because in business, you have for-profit, you have non-profit basic business. You have non-profit, you have for-profit. How you tell that you have um, accomplished your goal in for-profit is you look at the bottom line. You look at, did you make money this year? For non-profits, how you know if you have met your goal is, had, did you reach your mission? So every department in the church should be focused on one mission, one mission. So I'm not going to ask you, do you know what your mission is? And my first, uh, we're recording, but I'll say it anyway, because they know it's true. In my first board meeting, I asked my church leaders, I said, um, who here knows the church's mission? And they gave me the slogan, but the arms of Christ are always open. I said, that's not the mission. But I knew that the mission was on the wall, and I just pointed to it. I said, that's our mission right there. And everything that we do, everything that we do, will be synchronized to meet this mission. So we're doing food bank. How does it meet the mission? That's how you get funding in, my, in our church, 
is by saying you in order for your your organization your um your, your um, ministry to get funding, you have to show the board, not me, <clears throat> excuse me, show the board that how this is meeting the church's mission. And guess what? People will give to mission. People will give to mission. And that's why when you see people who are doing their own thing, they got to fund their own department. When you fund your own department, then the, the, the combined budget suffers. You just go around in this circle. So make sure that everything you do, and make sure next, by next Sabbath, go ahead and email all the members the mission so you can pray about that thing and, and how can you, now I'm not saying do what I do, I'm just saying, make sure that everybody knows what the mission is so they, they, that they can start aligning themselves with the mission of the church. Our church should speak with one voice. We can do different things, but it should all get back to one point and that's our mission that's how you know you did well uh at the end of the year yes sir Did I have to cut? Yes. Cut what? I'm sorry. Elder, this has, no, Elder, this has nothing to do with digital evangelism. <laughs> <laughs> but I answer your question. The only way you could get funding, let, let, let's, let's talk about leadership for a second. So let's switch subjects. In leadership, you have to set the tone for the church. You have to do that which means that some people are gonna be upset with you, some people are gonna love you. You can't be swayed by either one of those. So in leadership, what you gotta do is you're setting the tone. You set the tone by what the mission of the church is. And once again, in order to get funding, you have to make sure, you gotta tell the board, once again, not me, you have to tell the board how this, what you wanna do, is going to meet the mission of the church. How are you gonna help us meet our mission? If it doesn't, then you don't get voted any money. You go do it, <laughs> but it's not, it's not an operation of the church. And, but the, the key thing to that, so that, so that I didn't sound like uh, a dictator, is I got buy-in from the church leadership. This is a direction that I feel like the Lord is leading us. You know, what do you guys think? And they say, oh, that, that's a great thing because we're tired of um, uh, having uh, funding ministries that are not working. And that was the first thing, having ministries that are not working. And then you got ministries that are doing what he said, you, you're funding your own ministry, which takes away from the overall goal of the church. So how does your, and then it actually helped us help the person. Let's do it together. So we began to brainstorm together. We didn't just leave you out and say, okay, no, we're not fun. Let's see how we can do it. Once again, we don't say no, we say, how can we do it? How can we do it? What's well, a better way to do it? So, and then you don't have as many people mad at you. Yeah. All right, so we're going to get back to digital evangelism, but that, that's, that's, that's how I did that. Now, tracking metrics. Now, she had a great question earlier talking about the conversion, the API, uh, 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 and, and that information there. And this is what you want to do when you're tracking it and adjusting accordingly. So here's your step-by-step -step guide for that. Number one, um, you want to term, determine your goals. What goal do you want to reach for your funnel? One goal that we wanted to do, once again, was grow our young adult, um, our young adult ministry. That was one goal. Another goal was for people to plan their visit to the church. Another goal was for uh, people to get baptized. So all those are three different funnels that we use, and all of them have three different goals. So we have three different approaches. And also going to have different metrics to let us know if they're working or not. Um, choose the right metrics depending on your goals. There are different metrics that will be more relative uh, than others. You want to also use analytic tools. Um, you have each, so each software and also each, uh, what do you call it, um, social media platform, each platform has their own metrics that you can go there and see what's going on. What I do, I use a software where everything is in one place. So it pulls the metrics from all different places. I go to one place, one sign in, and I see what's working and what's not. 
Be not because I'm lazy, I'm just smart like that. I, I, I refuse to work harder. <laughs> I just go to one place and get it done. Uh, then you want to look at, um, you want to monitor regularly. You want to look at, once again, the fr I, I typically let it go for about a week because I know that the algorithm is learning, and then I'll step in, I'll see, okay, what's working, what's not, and to kind of make adjustments from there. You guys can kind of get your own rhythm and see what works best for you, but that's kind of what I do. That one week, and then from there, I'm day-to-day -day looking at things, basically every day, to be honest with you, after that one week, looking at everything. Uh, as a matter of fact, the system will tell you, it'll say learning, it'll tell you that it's still learning. I don't typically make adjustments during that learning period because I want to see what the algorithm is going, where it's going to land. Okay. That's a, that's a great question. How do we know uh, if it's working or not? There are three basic areas that we look to see one of, one, at least one of the things that are not working if the funnel is not working is going to be your hook, your story, or your offer. One of those three things are off. If you, if you go back and you spend time on your target audience, then you can perfect, I don't want to say perfect, but you will get very close to getting the perfect hook, hooking the person into your world. How are you telling your story? Is your story resonating with people? If you use the, uh, the, the, um, the framework that we have here on this paper here, it'll help you with your story. It'll help you be relevant to the individual. It'll help you do that. Yeah, we, we passed it out earlier. Okay. It'll help you do that. Now, there's another framework called... Yeah, they got it. So we got a, that, that's, that's one of the major ones that I would suggest using. There's another one called the PAST, P-A-S-T, where you look at the pain that the person is going through. It starts with that. But I like the, this one because it starts with the awareness first. It's not too intrusive, not too in their face. But if you do this, then it will help you with the story. So hook, story, and then your offer. The offer is like the e-books that I have, or you can have white paper, you can have blog, podcast, whatever. So if your funnel is not working, check one of those three things, and one of those three things are off. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Sure. Okay, great question. How are they doing? Can you bring up the uh, landing page again, please? Can you bring that up? And I'll, I'll show you exactly how it's done. So when you go to the landing page, if you see here, well, he clicked on it, so <laughs> there you go. So with each section, you're going to see a little button that says what? Plan your visit. Once you click on that button, it brings you to a calendar. And the people can choose which date that they want to come to our church. That's how they do it. And once they choose the date, go ahead and click all the way through it. Uh, click, click on a, uh, a date. It's going to take you to a form. Yeah, click on select date. It's going to take you to a form. And on that form is where they're going to fill out their information. That's what they're going to do. They're going to fill out their information. And that's how we get the information. The, the form is going to email me. It's going to email uh, our, our um, office manager. It's going to email our head elder, letting us know that somebody has decided they wanted to plan a visit to our church. And then we pass that name off to one of our members who make the phone call to the individual, and the system will start sending them a follow-up email sequence. Yeah, that's how you do that. All right, thank you, sir. I appreciate it. We can go back to the presentation. But that, that's how that happens. That's how you get people to enter to your world. You have the button. The button is your friend. The more people you can get to click that button, the more people that can plan their visit to your church. So that's, did I answer your question? Okay, cool, 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 cool. All righty. 
So where are we now? We went through all of that. Let's go here. Oh, back here. Um, Elder, you asked a question earlier about what, uh, what we use. Th this is what we've been using, um, the freebies that we use. So one's a prayer guide, one's a 21-day Daniel fast, one's a, uh, one's a um, uh, e-book about the Sabbath, and the other one's uh, the Best Life Blueprint. Yeah, we, we want to do things that are budget-friendly <laughs> and not cost us a, a whole bunch of money. Uh, let's see here. We are on this one here. Okay, so <clears throat> with this one, analyzing the data, you want to make your adjustments accordingly. Then you want to test new strategies. You want to look at what's working, what's not working, throw out what's working, what's not working, throw out what's not working, and figure out how you can make something else work better. So if, if we had done the best life blueprint and nobody bid on it, guess what we had to do? We had to go back and figure out what's wrong with this. Is it our hook? Did we, are we not using the right thing to capture their awareness? Are we, are we, is it our story? Are we not connecting with them in a very meaningful way? Are we not using the right uh, framework? Or is it our offer? The offer could be trash. Could be. But you gotta be honest with you. I worked, I worked hard on that, but still, it could be trash. <laughs> Even though the, the data suggested that this is what the people wanted, in real life, they may say, ah, no, that's not what we want. You gotta figure that part out. Yes, ma'am. My feedback mechanisms are the metrics. That's all I have. Yeah, I've, I've not asked anybody um, outside of our worship service. You know, that, that's the only feedback we've gotten, uh, if, it, if it's working or not. But your metrics will tell you if it's working or not. Yeah, when you start spending $3 for a click, you, know, you should say to yourself, this is not working. This is, this is not working. We're spending way too much money to get people to click on this ad. So that, that, that'll let you know that your ad isn't working. Something's wrong with your ad. And that's okay. It could be a picture. It could be um, the wording. And so what I, t I typically do like maybe two, three versions, and I will let the algorithm choose which one is working best. The algorithm will tell you, this one's working. These other two are trash. So you throw those out, no matter how bad you want it to work, if it doesn't work, then you don't worry about it. Great questions. So this is what we have here, building the digital marketing engine. This is what it's gonna cost you roughly to capture, nurture, and close. You can spend money on all of this equipment right here. You can do all that right there. And typically it's somewhere about $1,600 a month to get all of that equipment. Now, you may have the budget to do so. A lot of churches don't. A lot of churches don't have the equipment to do so. And also, when you see that these are individual softwares who don't work well with each other. And you have to figure out some way to make them work well with each other, which you have to buy another software called, what's the software called that you get to make the softwares talk to each other? What is it called? Um, I said it yesterday. That's what happens when you get old. Um, Zapier. Zapier. They call it a zap. So you have to... Uh, software A doesn't work well with software B. So say, for instance, if you have a landing page and you have a form, you got to figure out how to make the landing page work with the form and then get the form information to the CRM. All those are different software. They don't always work together. And then once you get the zap to make those work together, then one software may change what it does, and now you got to go back and redo it. So it can get very cost costly could get very time uh, time consuming to do this so but it's possible it is possible to do so if you guys want to do that so this is what I use to capture new leads nurture leads into visitors and nurture visitors into members all in one place and that's what's so important to me not because I'm lazy but because I'm smart so what if you could 
Create your full website, your funnels and land pages, drag and drop surveys and forms, online appointments and scheduler, easily customize follow-up campaigns, create multiple channel, uh, channel campaigns, two-way communication on all devices, automated nurture campaigns, full, fully customization of messaging, built-in AI, and full feature course management, all the analytics and reports all in one place. What if you could have that? Absolutely, you can. This is what, uh, once again, if you pull all those softwares together, I think it comes to be like $1,600 a month because all these are monthly subscriptions. None of these are, are, are friendly to our budget where they just give it to us. They want us to do monthly subscriptions, which is great, which I did for a long time. There, a lot of these have free versions, but you'll understand you can only go so far with the free version. If you want this thing done right, you got to uh, spend some money to get that done. So if you see right here on the far right, the thing that I use is called Metro Funnels, and I spend about $297 a month to get all this stuff done that I need to get done. 100% automated. Said it? 100% automated. Yeah, once you, once you do your sequences, your email or your text message sequences, you put it in the system, once it's triggered, it starts firing and sending it out to people. And it's on them to trigger it. They trigger it by going to your form or going to your uh, website, clicking on a button. Once they do that, they trigger the information and then it'll start sending stuff out. Ma'am. Well, here's the thing. It, the system text, it emails and it calls. <laughs> yeah, you can call. You can do a voice, a voice broadcast. I, when, when, we have, when I first got to my church, we had something called One Call, which was amazing for broadcasting. So you want to do One Call, and you do that. But what we use now, we're able to make the call to people, and people can call us back. Right now, a person could call my church, and I, it would ring my cell phone. It would do that. Yeah. So a person could text our church number, and it goes to my, it goes to my cell phone. It goes to um, my elder cell phone. It goes to everybody who needs to get it. So you could do that. And so we're not always in the office, but you can always have your office accessible to you. So that, that's why we decided to move uh, towards this software here. So what we discovered is that the, we use the professional pack, but you can do a starter pack for a website builder, a funnel builder, the form and surveys, and your CRM. That's what you need to get started. You can be successful with that. That's $97 a month. That's great. You can have your growth package, which, you, which also includes your email, your two-way SMS. SMS is text messaging. You can have your booking appointments. That's your um, people who use Calendly. You pay for that, the, the uh, pro version. You actually get that as part of this package here. And your workflow automations, all your workflow automation, your sequences that you set up, to be text or email, all of that comes in that package. But we decided to go with the professional package and it's everything on the growth package plus your reputation management. Why do we want to do that? Because we, it, people start now looking at churches and businesses on Yelp and also Google My Business. People will go to your website, they will go to Google My Business and see what people are saying about your church before they come. They will do that. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I love ClickFunnels. I'm not sure, but last night or today I said that that's actually how I got started. I started with the guy, Russell Brunson, who, who does ClickFunnels. I was part of his circle, paid $2,500 for 18 months so I can get all the information. But ClickFunnels now went to $297 a month, and they just have the website builder and the funnel builder. Yeah. They just have that. So I found this little gem right here, and I jumped ship. <laughs> I jumped ship because it has the um, uh, also has the course prod, uh, the course and the products. So I use courses for people who are say, for instance, if I want to do a baptismal class, right? And I, I'm a busy pastor. I don't have time to come to church and sit with people for long periods of time. What I can do is record the lessons, and people can go there and uh, they can get the lessons on their own time. It'll tell me they're on lesson one, they're on lesson two, they're on lesson three. They can ask questions in there and I can jump in and answer those questions. And that's how people are doing online school now. 
So it's just the same thing as people going to online classes. That, so that, that's why we decided to choose this and our tracking analytics are all in one place. So that's what we do. And that's it. Metrophonals is the thing that we use and I think that it is an amazing product. Was once again, you can use any of these other products. If you notice, click phones is right there at the top left hand side. Yeah. 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 Click phones. I, I love click phones. And lead pages, that's up there too. But they're limited in what they're gonna be able to do in what we need for digital evangelism. Because we're not just doing digital marketing. We need high tech and high touch. So that, that's, what, that's what that happens. So that's it for me. That's my presentation. And what, what we wanted to do is make sure that we got you a fully functioning funnel before we leave. So that's what we want to do. Now, who's going to be our team to take care of the funnel and make sure that everything is working? I, I need to show, a show of hands. Team. All right. Who else? The, the pastor's looking. Okay, so we need about five people. We can do that. Oh, she just stood up. Praise God. Amen. And then she put her hand up. Praise God. She's serious about this thing, but you're walking away. You're walking away. Yeah. <laughs> need about five people on your team to make sure that this thing, you can do it with one person. I started out with one person. That was me. I don't recommend it, but you can get away with it for one person. Yeah, and that's why we want to do, I say, do a team of five and people, everybody can have their own login and you're going into the system. You can set, you can set it to where you have uh, people who you want to be admin. They have, the, they have um, access to everything. You have people who are just editors. They can only go to certain places. Like say, for instance, if you want to have a person who only works on the website, then you can make them an editor and assign them just the website. You can do that. And so that, that's what you want to do. So I, I recommend you have at least five people. Someone may be, get sick. Someone may get burned out. Someone may get challenged. But everybody's working together. We have an old saying where I'm from, many hands make light work. So I, I'm suggesting that we do at least five people. And I would love to have those five people today so I can, when I leave here, you'll have your funnel up and running. Because everybody else can go home. We're going to start working. That's one. That's two. We need five more. Three. Who else? Who else? I see you looking at me. You, you ready? <laughs> All right, that's three. Need two more people. I'm not, we're we, we going to take up an offering after a while. All right, that's three right there. Number three. All right, thank you. Oh, there's three of them in there. Okay, so we got six people. Great. Great, great, great. Anybody else? Anybody else want to become a part of this fantastic team? All right. So what I'm going to do, this, this, uh, I'm going to set you up on Metro Funnels. It has a 14-day uh, free trial, but I'm going to uh, push it um, for you guys and see, not see, well, we're going to get you the 30 day free trial so you can put in your funnel, turn it on and make sure that it's working for you. All right. Now the information, once again, the, the funnel works. I'm going to give you everything that I have, everything that I'm using. You're going to have it. Now you're going to have to build out your own website and your own landing pages because no, nobody in Fresno wants to see my face come up on the, <laughs> I'll take them now. <laughs> we'll, we'll make them become official members online. We'll do that. But um, I'm sure you want people to come to your church. So what we need, pastors, uh, from you guys is for you to get your, uh, to get your script together uh, for the video. Because what, what, what we find is that people need to know who the pastor is, and the pastor is the one who is extending the invitation to the church. So we can come together, put all the content, but we need you guys to film the video. You don't need a bunch of equipment to do it. My, that video that you guys saw, I did it on my phone at my house. I just had a green screen, boom, and did it. Okay. So I do have a script that I use, but you can use it if you want to. You can make up your own, either way you want to do it. All right. So let's get to work. Yes, ma'am.
I do. I do. We talked about that last night. And so basically what, what video shorts are, what I do is I, on the Sabbath sermon, I'll take the video and I'll, I'll make clips of the video. Anywhere from 15 to 30 seconds, nothing too long. And then I have a, a link to what it is I want them to do. When I'm having a special meeting, what I do is I've, um, we use the um, uh, Meta's, uh, what do you call it, conversion API. And we use the uh, Google, uh, what is it called? Ad, it's not AdWords, what is it called? Um, their tracking system. Well, whatever it's called, we use that. Analytics, thank you, analytics. And so it assigns you a number. And so what you do is you put that uh, in your funnel. So as people are interacting with the video, when I do my retargeting campaign, I'm saying, hey, I, you guys have been looking at my videos, hoping you found value in that. We're getting ready to have a special event over here at the church, talk about the things that you just heard about. And I, and I have my little, uh, what do you call it, flyer. And I hold up my flyer in the video that's retargeting, and I say, is this, you should look for this to come in the mail. If you not, have not already received it, I'm going to send you one in the mail. Look, look for the mail for it. And I want you to show up at my church on such and such date, such and such time. This is what you're going to have. These are people who you've already built a rapport with because they've been watching your videos. They've been doing that. And what I do um, is uh, I will, when I'm having something special, I'll start to boost or to uh, do the ad with the videos. Yeah, so that it intentionally goes out to this community. Intentionally goes out to this community. Very good, you know what you're talking about. Good job, I like that, good job. All right, so we're gonna, unless you have, have anything else, we're gonna pray and let you guys go, and the team, we're gonna get to work and get this thing done. Unless y'all wanna stay and help out. Everybody wanna stay and help out? Nobody said amen. <laughs> Well, thank you guys so much for having me here today. I appreciate you allowing me to come into your world. Hopefully you guys found the information valuable. Did you get value out of anything that I talked about over the last two days? Anything? Okay, great, great, great. And I'm so excited for you because I believe that God is going to do something amazing. As I walked into your sanctuary, I saw where it has the max occupancy, 650 people. So what we're going to do is set our target for, um, let's say something crazy like a thousand people that we want God to bring to Fresno West Side. Can we agree on that? You do understand there's a verse in the Bible that says what you touch and agree on. There are two that touch agree on what? Anything. Anything. So if you want to touch agree with me, I want to ask God to give this church a thousand souls to do that through these funnels so that people can come in and have their lives changed. I love the fact that you, you talked about having the church ready to receive the souls. We did a 21 day fast at the beginning of the year to make sure that our church was spiritually ready to do that. You, you're gonna have some people in your church who are not necessarily nice people. Everybody's not converted. Unfortunately, when you get baptized, they don't hand you out halos and wings and harp, they don't do that. But um, we, we have to work with those people where they are, too, and uh, let them know that they're valuable. And, and if not, we got to kick them out. No, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. But guard, guard the new souls, because once again, you have one chance to make first impression. You want to make sure that's right. Another thing that happens is with physical plant. You got to make sure that your church, your, your, your building is ready to receive people. That means that the deacons get here maybe the night before, turn the AC on. So when people walk in, it's not cooling off. It's already cool in those uh, hot summer days. You gotta make sure, I'm not sure if you guys got a cleaning crew or you got uh, uh, volunteers that do it, but you wanna make sure that uh, Friday evening, that uh, Friday uh, uh, before sunset, that all the bathrooms are clean, all the carpets are clean. You wanna make sure that all the, uh, you have signage everywhere. Because when you're coming to a new place, you don't know where the bathroom is. You don't know. But what you want to do is make sure that you have the proper signage. And last night we also talked about your greeter. We're not going to point them to a direction. What we're going to do is take them by the hand, not literally, but figuratively, take them by the hand and show them. So if someone comes and they're, they're, uh, when they're walking in, we're going to say, uh, let them know the sanctuary is straight ahead. The, uh, the bathrooms are to your right or to your left. Um, and and they, if they say, well, yeah, you know, I like to use the bathroom, take them to the bathroom. 
Take him, show him where it is. Even though the sanctuary is right here straight and you can see it, once again, you got to have row captains. So the, row, you gotta, the greeter is going to bring the person to sit beside the row captain because the row captain's job is going to make sure the person feels, feels welcome, they feel warm, and they feel like this is a place that they want to come. And the row captain should be one of the people who says to them, I'll see you next week. Okay? They need to hear that as many times as possible. We'll see you next week. We'll see you next week. Hope you enjoyed the service. We'll see you next week. Got a smile. You're not, you're not asking us.